Is there scientific evidence against the existence of God? Yuri Gagarin, the Soviet cosmonaut and the first man in space, is supposed to have said, I looked and looked, but didn't see God. Leaving aside that this quote probably originated from Khrushchev rather than Gagarin, does the fact that you don't see God in space or anywhere else disprove God's existence? In short, can science be used to disprove the God theory? I'm a scientist and also a Christian, and I often get asked this question. There are at least four kinds of objections to faith in God that take their starting point in scientific discoveries or processes. The first objection says that the scientific method has disproved the existence of God. Second, foundational Christian teachings have been disproven by the scientific process. Third, the scientific way of thinking is opposed to faith. Fourth, one might argue that institutional Christianity has been an obstacle to scientific progress. In response to this, we could start with a general point. If God is the source of all that exists in the material world, which science investigates through the scientific method, and if he is also the source of what Christians believe by faith, then there cannot be any intrinsic conflict between understanding gained through science and understanding gauged through faith or theological speculation. God is the source of all truth, both truths of the Christian faith and the truths discovered by science. If we could identify an intrinsic conflict between Christian faith and science, it would threaten one of the core tenets of Christianity. The Greek and Roman gods, think of Zeus and Athena, were thought to be especially excellent beings within the world. It is conceivable that this kind of supernatural being could be investigated using some of the same methods that we apply to other aspects of the created order. God, as traditionally understood by Christianity, is not like that. In Christian revelation and theology, God is not an especially impressive being in the world, but rather the source of all being, who holds the entire created order in existence. He cannot be investigated by any of the instruments we have invented, however sophisticated. The first objection simply misunderstands what has been traditionally meant with the word God in the Judeo-Christian tradition. Let's move on to the second objection. Have teachings fundamental to the Christian faith been disproven by scientific progress? For example, some might say that the scientific method seems to have disproved the existence of miracles, that the theory of evolution seems to have disproved God's creation of humans, that the Big Bang theory seems to have disproved God's creation of the world, and that neuroscience seems to have disproved the existence of the soul. Several of these possible conflicts will be treated in depth in later episodes. More generally, there are Christians who teach that biblical revelation provides natural scientific knowledge about the material universe, and therefore provides competing theories to the theories discovered by modern science. In that case, conflicts are indeed possible, but this is not the teaching of the Catholic Church. According to the Church, the theological truth that God created the cosmos and sustains it at all times is not in conflict with the Big Bang Theory. Instead, the doctrine of creation provides a theological answer to the theological and philosophical question about why anything exists at all, while the Big Bang Theory provides a scientific explanation of how the universe evolved close to the beginning of time. These explanations operate at different planes and cannot in principle conflict if they are properly understood. Similar distinctions can be made for the other three cases. The third objection is psychological. That is, it claims that faith-based and science-based ways of thinking about reality are opposed to one another, and therefore that one cannot possibly be a fully integrated scientist and person of faith at the same time. Empirically, there is no evidence to support this. Many of the most famous scientists through time were devoutly religious. 
This would include Newton, Kepler, and Maxwell. And path-breaking Catholic scientists include Copernicus, Descartes, Fermat, Galileo, Lemaitre, Mendel, Pascal, Volta, and von Neumann. Many of these were far more devout and interested in things religious than would have been expected even of their times. While there's no empirical support for this objection, it is interesting to also consider whether we should expect such a psychological conflict to exist based on our understanding of the practice of faith and practice of science. Here I speak as a practitioner of both. Both the scientific quest and the religious one have elements of faith or trust and of reason. Finally, let's consider where there is evidence for the claim that institutional Christianity, and more specifically the Catholic Church, has been an obstacle to scientific progress. This is a complex historical question with some evidence on both sides. The most famous evidence for the conflict theory is the Galileo affair. But this was a complicated conflict between Catholics within the church that had as much to do with the personalities of both Galileo and the Pope as it had with differences on how to interpret scientific evidence and biblical passages. If this is the main piece of evidence against the church, the case is not very strong. A prominent piece of evidence opposing the idea that the church has been an obstacle to scientific progress is the fact that the university, the center of the modern scientific enterprise, started as a medieval Catholic institution. Another piece of evidence is that many of the early modern scientists explicitly cite their Christian faith as inspiration for their scientific pursuit. A third is the number of Catholic clergy who made foundational discoveries in scientific areas, such as spectroscopy, geology, cosmology, and genetics. The Catholic Church today is committed to the importance of the scientific method as a means to explore creation and further human flourishing, and has been actively working to build bridges between scientific and religious communities. In summary, none of these objections appear to be serious threats to the teachings of the Catholic Church, that both the scientific method and faith provide paths to the truth. And that since the truth is one, scientific and theological truths cannot in principle be in opposition to one another. For readings, podcasts, and more videos like this, go to Aquinas101.com. While you are there, be sure to sign up for one of our free video courses on Aquinas. And don't forget to like and share with your friends, because it matters what you think.